just <laughs> I've just discovered that I didn't have the sound on in all of that. So Lisa and Rowan are out gardening. Um, it's quarter past six on a Sunday evening and I'm preparing our dinner or our tea. At some other time we could have a discussion between what is dinner, what's tea, what's high tea. Um, but anyway, yes, we are having sea bass uh, cooked with some pear and some herbs and some celery. Uh, well, you'll see the ingredients. You'll see the ingredients in a minute or two. Well, here we are with the ingredients. So the sea bass, some red onion, which is milder than white onion, some celery, some pear, and herbs from the garden. So we have some thyme, some rosemary, tomatoes, So we'll start preparing them. First of all, the celery. Onion has been trimmed. Uh, we're going to divide this. Yeah, we've got two fish, so half each way. And then adding the herbs. Now, in adding the herbs, I'm really trying to imagine what's going to come through. And I'm sort of tasting it in my mouth, so... The thing with the herbs is you can very easily overpower the fish. And that's something we don't want to do. What's interesting in doing the voiceover is I don't remember what I was thinking at the time that I was doing it. <laughs> I'm sure there were things I was telling you that seemed important. But there we go. Now, I'm going to slice the pear. I am slicing the pear very thinly because we don't want a big clump of pear in the fish and um, what we're doing is we're adding these things and the pear um, and later some tomato and some tonic water but just a very dash of tonic water you can guess where that leftover piece went so here we go we're going to put things into the fish. Now the fish has been cleaned and gutted uh, and, and cleaned out. And it's just a question of putting it in really and spreading it through the cavity. And there we go. We're going to wrap it in aluminium foil. <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Um, the wine. Oh, here we go, doing the second fish. The wine is in homage to one of my favourite television chefs, Keith Floyd. He was a fascinating chef, and he was also a very, very good writer. Um, and he also bankrupted himself in the restaurant industry several times. But uh, an absolutely fascinating individual. So the aluminium foil, we'll wrap it and seal it. I don't think aluminium foil was made to get on with men, or maybe it's men weren't made to get on with aluminium foil. That and cling film, to me, seem to be the absolute curse of the kitchen. Um, anyway, I'm taking care to seal it over so that as the, we develop steam, the steam stays in there rather than escaping. Because the whole thing with cooking fish like this is to keep it moist. And in doing that, which I nearly, nearly forget each time, there we go, unwrapping again, is to add a little fluid, a little liquid. You could use... Uh, a fruit juice, provided it wasn't too strong, um, an apple juice or cider actually works very well. But today we're using tonic water. Um, there we are. Seal it down carefully. 
do a quick Keith Floyd. That's a very nice one, Keith. Thank you very much. I like that habit. Yeah. Here's some explanation that I don't remember. <laughs> well, how many it for? It's in the oven for 20 minutes, maybe half an hour. Oh, I what's have going on here then? <laughs> I've just discovered that I didn't have the sound on in all of that. <laughs> I'm back. And um, having said to you that I'm not going to show you making a salad, <laughs> I am after all. Uh, I want something to do while uh, the fish is cooking. So, the ingredients that we're going to put in the salad, we have a packet of mixed leaves. We're going to put in a little onion and herbs. Now this is the same blend as we had in the fish. It, it's always, I think it's always a challenge when you make a salad to go with another thing. What do you do with the salad? You want the salad to be interesting, but you can't afford it to have such a strong flavour that it knocks out the, the other food that you've got, particularly if you have something like fish, which is sea bass, which is a, a lovely, soft, subtle flavour. Uh, here we have mange two peas. Well, they are peas. It's... Um, I've microwaved them for a minute. They've still got crunch, but they're not going to be really harsh. And they're rather unusual because it's normally seen as a, 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 a sweet thing. We're going to put strawberries in. Strawberries are coming into season. Uh, these are the last three left. I'm doing it while Rowan isn't here because if he saw them, he'd be going, They're my strawberries, my strawberries. Now, having said that, he's had them now for a day and hasn't eaten them. We worry about our little man um, and his food because he goes for things, eats them quite a bit, and then all of a sudden he just won't touch them at all. So he's done his strawberry thing, and I think that's now finished. I'm hoping that he won't finish mango. Um, mango is good for him, it's one of our favourite fruit. And at the moment he is taking it, although the last few days he's shown a bit less interest. This is a, an English cheddar cheese. It's a mature cheddar, so it's got a bit of bite, uh, but it's not a desperately strong cheese. There is a choice and we do have this French cheese, Camembert. And I was, yes, as I'm telling you about it, I'm thinking I will put some in. Uh, Camembert is a soft, gooey cheese. <laughs> if you let them get overripe, they're like smelly socks. <laughs> uh, there you be, maybe. Do you have some of my socks in your salad, dear? Um, but because it's, it's a softer, more subtle flavour than the other cheese. One of the things about salad is because it's an assemblage and not a real thing, you can unpick it and take things out as you're eating. Tomatoes would be a traditional thing in British salads. But again, because Reese is not that fond of tomatoes, well, these are cooled down. Because Reese is not that fond of tomato, I'm not going to put any in. Um, now, I don't want to overload this with cheese, so I'm not going to add any Italian cheese. But we quite often have grated Parmesan uh, over our salad or, or turned through the salad. Now, this. 
is the favourite food of Peter Rabbit. Do you know about Peter Rabbit? Now Peter Rabbit. He's a, well these days he's a little cart cartoon um, animated rabbit. But when I was a little, and when my dad was little, when Peter Rabbit was first around, he was a, a character in a book. Um, his favourite food. Your challenge for today is either to recognise these or to find out what they are by looking for Peter Rabbit and the stories of Peter Rabbit. So there you are, the finished salad, um, just with some uh, chives from the garden. All, all of the herbs are from our garden. In fact, that's all the herbs in the garden. <laughs> I mean, they, these are the only herbs that we have in the garden. In here. Uh, that's it. Back again. Um, I said to you that we are going to serve mashed potato. Uh, it seems these days in chefy circles, the circles of chefs, the fashion is to call things crushed. Your mashed potato is very soft, very creamy. Uh, it would have a lot of milk and butter in it. And for a real mashed potato, you certainly would not do what I've done, which is to cook the potato in their skins and catch them. So I really ought to be saying to you, this is more of a crushed potato. Uh, but again, I'm going to beat it a bit more so it's a bit smoother. But the reason for leaving the potato skins on are of a, some texture. And again, so, and then, and then the reason why it's this colour is there's two small sweet potatoes in it. You can see, oh ho, ho ho. Now that's an important sign. That's 18 minutes for the fish. So let's put this over here. There. We have to choose one of the fish. And I'll take this one nearest you. <laughs> Be careful, this is hot. Oh, the smells lovely. You get a bang of the herbs. What we're looking for. Oh no, that's nowhere near ready. There's a this this line down the fish. I mean, most of you would know this, I expect. But anyway, is where the muscles join. I think is a way to describe it. And the fish is cooked when you can just gently tease those apart. And at the moment, they are away. <laughs> All I've got to do now is to. Go and set the table. Um, so I'll, I'll do that. Um, then it'll be time to tell the little family who are busy. I'll show you. Hang on a minute. It's always interesting to know what's going on when you're busy, busy, busy. But this is what's happening. Hello. You going to tell us what you're up to? Water You're watering the plants. That's very good of you. So those were in for a total of 35 minutes altogether. Remember to, to like and, and subscribe. subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>